the single most important part of your video is your audio and if you are a content creator with youtube videos or your live stream on any platform using obs or slobs or if you just do conference calls over zoom or skype so you need to watch this video and it may be the most important video you watch today because i'm going to show you exactly how to get pro audio quality with the lowest cost possible here we go the way we're going to get this awesome audio sound is to go through a DAW or a digital audio workstation. What that is, is basically a software which will allow you to record, mix your audio, add backing tracks, add your instruments, mix all those together, do whatever you want, control them with different plugins and effects, and export that audio into your computer as an mp3 file, or even push that audio forward into OBS or Zoom and use it during a live stream. Probably the most two famous DAW softwares you're going to find online are Ableton Live or Fruity Loops. I myself use Ableton, so I'm going to show you how to get that. First thing you want to do is navigate over to ableton.com and here you will notice that you can download a live trial for Ableton Live. The other thing you can do is also download Ableton Live Lite version, which has pretty much everything that you need. Now this is going to allow you to try Ableton Live full version for about three months. A pro tip here, if you find that after the trial is over that you enjoyed Ableton Live Lite, then instead of going ahead and paying for the software, you can buy a whole bunch of hardware and get Ableton Live Lite for free with the hardware. There is a list on the Ableton website that will list all of the hardware on the market with which you can get Ableton Live Lite for free. So you may want to check that out instead of paying for just the software. After you get Ableton Live or Live Lite installed, then if you are just doing this for purposes of recording videos, then that is all you need. However, if you want to use that for streaming, there are a couple of other things we want to do. The first thing is go ahead and go to the website where you can download something called Soundflower. And I'm going to have that listed in the description below links to all of these sites. So Soundflower is an audio routing solution, which is going to let you channel your audio from one application to another. In our case, we're going to channel the audio from Ableton Live into OBS or into Zoom. So you want to go ahead and click that free download button. This is available only for Mac. If you are on a Windows, I'm sure you can go ahead and uh, find a video on YouTube, which will show you a similar software for Windows. After you download Soundflower, just install it on your computer and you're good to go. Next thing you want to do if you're on a Mac is go to the spotlight search here and type in MIDI and then open up the audio MIDI setup. Double click that and you want to create something called a multi output device. So click the plus button here, select create multi output device. I'm not going to do another one because this is the one that I have over here. Once you have that, it's going to show up and it's going to list here a bunch of things that you can go ahead and check. What you want to check are two things. First, you want to make sure you select Soundflower 2 channel and check that. The next thing you want to check is whatever your microphone is plugged into. My mic is plugged into the Scarlett Solo audio interface, so I'll go ahead and check Scarlett Solo. If your mic is plugged straight into your computer or you're just using the computer built into your mic, so you want to check the built-in mic, so built-in output, instead of Scarlett Solo. If you are using a USB type of mic, then you just select that along with Soundflower 2 channels. I'm going to take a second here and talk about something in relation to this. A standard non-USB microphone such as this Neewer mic over here, which is about $25, $30 on Amazon when I got it, needs something that will allow you to plug it into the computer. That is why you need an audio interface. I'm using the Scarlett Solo, which is one of the more popular ones, cost about maybe $100 to $120 as new, but you can find it on eBay for probably half of that. Another popular choice is uh, some audio interfaces which are made by M-Audio. The advantage of going through this route is maybe in the future you decide on buying like a more expensive microphone then you can just plug that into your audio interface and that will work so you can upgrade your microphone as your career improves. A USB mic on the other hand plugs into your computer directly through a USB cable. 
and that is because a USB mic is a microphone plus an audio interface built into the same unit so you can think about it like that so in the future if you decide on upgrading you cannot upgrade one without the other so that's just something to consider so we are back in here and we created our multi output device and selected soundflower and whatever our mic is we can just exit that next thing you want to do if you're on a mac is go to system preferences hit that apple logo system preferences and go to sound inside sound for your output you want to select that multi output device that you just created and for your input you select whatever your mic is plugged into after you do that you can just exit out of that once this is done just go ahead and open ableton inside of ableton you want to create an audio track so make sure you go to this horizontal view here instead of the vertical view so hit that horizontal view and you can right click anywhere and insert an audio track once you do that an audio track is going to appear which looks like this one over here in my case i named mine sos voice and this is what i'm using for my mic go to live preferences and hit the audio tab in your audio again for input select whatever your mic is plugged into mine is the scarlet solo and for your output select that multi output device we created and that is it close out of that and we are back in here in here you want to do two things first of all make sure that the channel is on so make sure that this number here for your channel so this is the fourth fourth uh, track on my DAW see I have one two three this is four make sure this is lit up and is not unchecked next thing you want to do is make sure this button is selected and what this is going to do is this is going to keep your audio track active at all times whether you are recording or not otherwise if you don't do that then you're going to be speaking and talking and whatever and singing and there is no audio that's going to come through another thing you want to make sure of is go here on the channel selection and make sure you select the one channel that is transmitting voice you do not want to select both channel one and two because otherwise this is going to be in stereo mode and your voice might just be going into the right or left ear alone so make sure you select channel one this will make sure that your voice is in mono and people are hearing it from both ears once this is done this is all you need to do in the daw for voice so why would you want to go through all of this trouble setting up your voice inside of a daw well a daw is going to allow you to add so many plugins free plugins in many cases such as everything that i'm using over here if you notice i have all of these plugins added to my voice to make my voice sound cool and awesome for example a very important plugin that i use is the denoiser over here and this eliminates all of the background noise and i actually did a first video on that on my channel which i will link somewhere up here so if i were to turn the denoiser off then you would be hearing all of this horrible background noise coming from the air conditioning system or from the cars on the street or whatever once i turn the denoiser on all of the voice is gone and all of the noise disappears this is just an example of a single plugin in future videos i'm going to show you how to add so many plugins and what they do from compressors to equalizers and show you how you can change your voice maybe you want to get a radio sound or enhance your speech and then you can use that voice in your youtube video or you can just transmit that voice into obs or zoom on your live stream this for example is a compressor this for example is a pretty cool plugin here which is called a wider this kind of gives you like a roomy feel so if i increase the percentage on my wider you can notice that you might achieve more of a radio channel kind of sound i'm gonna drop it back to what i had it on before 37 percent because that works for me and exit out of that so once your voice is set up here if you are just recording a youtube video all you need to do is hit that record button and it will be recording such as what i'm doing now if you notice it is recording my voice and you can just go to file export audio and export it as an mp3 file and then add it to your video file 
if you want to transmit this DAW awesome voice after you get it set up into OBS or into Zoom, then this is where Soundflower comes in. So once we're happy with our voice in the DAW, we're just going to minimize out of that and open up OBS. Inside of OBS, you want to go ahead and hit the plus sign on your scene and add an audio output capture, not an audio input. The reason for that is because the DAW is already picking up our input and we just want to transmit that sound as an output into our live stream. So add the audio output capture. This is mine for example. You go to properties and here you select Soundflower 2 channel because that is where your sound is now. When you created that multi-output device which included the Soundflower and in my case the Scarlet Solo what that is doing is telling your computer to output that sound that's coming in through the mic into two things. The first thing is it's going to output it back into the Scarlet Solo and this is where my headphones are plugged in so that is why I can now hear myself and monitor my audio and also it is transmitting that audio into Soundflower which is a virtual audio station if you want to think about it. That means whatever streaming app or conference app that you're using from this point on when you go to the audio to select your microphone anywhere you select the Soundflower 2 channel you're going to be hearing that sound that you created inside of the DAW. So inside OBS for that audio output device select Soundflower 2 channel. You say OK and now you will notice that when I'm talking the indicator is going up and down. That means it is receiving an audio signal from the DAW. So if you go to the DAW you notice the meter is going up and down so this is functioning properly and inside the audio output capture in OBS also the meter is going up and down. One thing you want to make sure of otherwise it will cause you problems and become annoying is go to the audio output capture to the advanced audio properties and make sure your monitoring is set to off because you're already monitoring your voice from Ableton. You don't want to have a dual signal coming into your headphones. So set your monitoring to off. One more thing you need to do inside of OBS is go to settings and go to the audio tab and select Soundflower 2 channel for your desktop audio. Click OK and you're done. So now your audio from your stream is going through the DAW into your stream. Well, we can do the same thing for Zoom. So if you go ahead and open up Zoom here and go to the Zoom preferences, we can go to the audio tab and make sure for our microphone, we select microphone 2 channel, Soundflower 2 channel. So as you notice, I am talking and the indicator is moving up and down because it is receiving the signal from the DAW. This means that whatever I do in the DAW now, I can live stream that sound, which is a key and very important thing. Let me show you some things you can do in the DAW. So back in Ableton Live, we covered how to add your voice. You can add, for example, a speech enhancer. You can add an equalizer. You can add a limiter and these are all built into Ableton. A lot of people who live stream on OBS already use filters for their mics and use the plugins as filters. So you're going to say, well, why do I still need a DAW? Well, I'm going to show you exactly why. So if we go back into OBS here and you go to the, you know, your input, mic input, I'm going to add one. Audio input capture. If I go to the filters and I try to add a filter as a VST plugin, let's say I want to add that denoiser that I have in my DAW. Well, you're going to notice that it's not there. And that is because OBS does not recognize all the possible plugins available that you download on your computer, whereas the DAW will recognize every single VST plugin that you download. So that is one reason why you'd want to go through a DAW. Another very important reason is because once you have that set up in your DAW, you can also use it outside of OBS, just like we did in Zoom. So what we covered today is getting your voice set up in Ableton and forwarding that voice into OBS or Zoom for live streaming. 
if you're just recording for a YouTube video, then you don't need to create a multi-output device and you don't need to download Soundflower and it will work for you on Mac or on Windows. You just download the DAW, record your voice onto there, extract it as an MP3 file and sync it and add it to your video later. With the use of plugins that you can download for free or use existing plugins inside of Ableton, you can make any microphone sound good. So before investing in expensive mics, you can just use what you have and make a cheap microphone such as this newer mic over here even sound great. A pro tip for musicians here, I myself live stream playing guitar on Twitch. I also go through the DAW because in the DAW, I can just add my guitar track here. I can add the effects. For example, I'm using something called the Guitar Rig 5, which I am going to cover in future videos. Also for keyboard players, for, you know, if you use synthesizers and all that stuff. Or if you already use Ableton Live, you can just learn now how to forward that voice straight into your stream. We're going to cover all of this and more in future videos in detail. And also we will have individual videos that will explain how to use individual plugins, be it for voice or for instruments. So make sure you like, hit the notification bell and that subscribe button. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you.